Well, hello everybody out there and welcome to the 2021 virtual Purple Walk Celebration Ceremony for Epilepsy Toronto. I don't know about you, but I was really dancing, so I'm in a pretty good mood. My name is Isabel and I'm so excited and honored to be your host for this celebration of Purple Pride. I've been participating in the Purple Walk for five years now, and I've been a member of Epilepsy Toronto for six years. I've been able to see this agency from both sides as a volunteer working for them and also as a client. I can honestly say that I would not be who I am today if it weren't for this agency and their incredible support and resources. Part of what I love about this agency is the sense of community Epilepsy Toronto helps create. It's so good to see so many of you today. I've missed you. Yes, it is true. We are back to a virtual ceremony this year, making sure everyone is able to stay safe and participate in the best way they know how. But of course, being virtual doesn't mean we have to lose any of the energy. Isn't that right, Purple Walkers? Isn't that just amazing? From all over Toronto and Ontario, our amazing Purple Walkers, everybody. Give them another round of applause. I love the Purple Walk because it means I get to share and celebrating with my community of purple warriors and all the incredible things each of us can do, especially for our purple pride challenges. So a few things I want everybody to be aware of before we kick off the exciting festivities. If you want to share why the purple walk is important to you, leave a comment in the chat function on Zoom. I think it's right down there. We might share some of your comments live as part of the event. Keep that chat close at hand. We are looking for nominees in each of the following categories. Best purple walk costume, best background, and most purple walk spirit. If you see anyone that fits our categories, nominate them in the chat with their screen name, which should be right there, and a category. Throughout the ceremony, we will pick three lucky walkers for each category and the winner will be chosen by one of our illustrious judges. Today is all about celebrating with you. Make noise, have fun, celebrate yourselves. With your help so far, we have already raised an incredible $101,006 that, that will go towards making sure Epilepsy Toronto can continue to offer their vital programs and services free of charge to members. Together, we are building a world where people living with epilepsy, their caregivers, their loved ones, and communities feel supported. Donations are still being accepted, you can head to Epilepsy Toronto's website to make a donation now. Thank you, and I can't wait to see what our grand total will be. Now folks, we are so fortunate to be able to get together like this, share and learn together as a community on the traditional territories of the Anishinaabe, Ojibwa, Haudenosaunee, and the Mississaugas of the Credit and other nations recorded and unrecorded. To acknowledge the land we are on, I invite my friend, Jarrett, to speak. Chimigwich, Isabel. Happy Purple Waga, everybody. It is so great to see you. My name is Jarrett, and I am a settler on the land that we call Toronto. Now, I wanted to open this land acknowledgement with Chimigwich, as from my personal understanding, this is how you express a big thank you in the Anishinaabemowayan language. The traditional language of many Indigenous communities across Turtle Islands, including the Mississaugas of the Credit. There are many things that I am very thankful for today. For the ability to continue to work on what we now call Toronto, to serve members of Indigenous communities and settlers alike, 
to continue to understand how we as Epilepsy Toronto can grow with our Indigenous communities and dismantle the historical and contemporary barriers in access to care to Indigenous communities and other marginalized communities across Turtle Island. As an organization here in Ontario, we feel a personal responsibility to acknowledge the importance of First Nations, Métis, and Inuit peoples across Turtle Island and work towards better service for all people that come to this land. I would now like you all to watch a land acknowledgement given by Epilepsy Toronto's member, Lauren Dubois. Ani, bonjour. My name is Lauren Dubois and I belong to the Anishinaabek Nation and an Epilepsy Toronto member as well. I have some sacred tobacco with me, which I will offer to this tree to thanks, give thanks for coming together in a good way. I've been asked and honored to do the First Nations land acknowledgement for Epilepsy Toronto. We acknowledge that the land that we are meeting on is the traditional territory of many nations, including Mississaugas of the Credit, the Anishinaabe, the Chippewa or the Ojibwe, the Haudenosaunee, and the Wyandotte peoples, and is now home to many diverse Indigenous, and Inuit, and Métis people. We also will acknowledge that Toronto is covered by Treaty 13 with Mississauga of the Credit. My grandfather, an Ojibwe elder, Art Solomon, taught us that we should live simply and humbly. We don't own the earth or anything on it, and it's our responsibility to live in harmony with each other and all of creation. In order to do this, we need to let go of our greed and arrogance and respect each other and our mother earth. I'm very grateful for the teachings from my grandfather, from my ancestors, and from my friends at Epilepsy Toronto. Chiniguach. Chiniguach, Lauren. Thank you so much for sharing your acknowledgement and to all of you for continuing the important work of reconciliation. This is Zoom, some things happen, so bear with us as we continue. Toronto is a vibrant hub to so many beautiful cultures and communities that come together to live, to learn, and to grow. Something I have learned through my connection with Epilepsy Toronto is that epilepsy does not discriminate. It can affect people of all genders, cultures, colors, ages, and walks of life. While people living with epilepsy share some common experiences, each person's story is unique. Every story or experience shared is an opportunity for us and others to learn and grow. Through the sharing of our stories and listening to others, we are helping to break down the harmful stigmas and make Toronto a better place for everyone in it. We now have a very special guest joining us for this week's, this year's Purple Walk. Someone who knows a whole lot about working to make Toronto a better place, a longtime supporter of Epilepsy Toronto, let's give a huge Purple Pride welcome to Mayor John Tory. Thank you, uh, Isabel. I should take that canned applause around with me. And I want you to know that I, I saw there's a contest for um, best costume. And I do have my purple sweater on here, but I would have worn that tutu that I saw on the screen if somebody had only made it known to me. So next year when the walk's next back in year. person, Next year, you can have the uh, have the tutu uh, at the ready, and and I'll put it on. Somebody will have to pay a lot of money to make sure that happens uh, for all Epilepsy right. Toronto. Taking Isabel, may I just say, point. all right, <laughs> Isabel, may I say thank you to you as well? You know, I think most people know you've had the courage to not just do something like this, but to tell your story. And you know, in the context of having people become more aware and become more understanding and more supportive, um, you know, that storytelling on your part, uh, which took a lot of courage, and, and you've had a great success in your career, so that's why it means even more uh, as an example. So thank you for that, and a big thank you from me today to the people who have put on uh, the Purple Walk and uh, you know carried it on, notwithstanding the pandemic. Uh, it's easier to have these events in some respects. I mean, I know it's a hassle to organize them all the time, but to do it virtually is a, uh, it's a bigger assignment. But everybody stepped up uh, and everybody stepped up to uh, to uh, answer the challenge today. Everybody stepped up to uh, donate money and lots of money's raised. We've heard about that more than one hundred thousand dollars, which for a day's work is uh, fabulous. And 
I hope that it's going to do a lot as well to, uh, to do the things that we need to see Epilepsy Toronto doing, raise awareness, erase the stigma, and provide supports. I, just, I looked at the website, and it's extraordinary. This coming week alone, and you don't need to know this because you're all people that are already supporters, but on Monday, Mindful Monday, Tuesday, Uplift for Caregivers, Wednesday, an Employment Workshop, Thursday, Young Parent Support Group, uh, there's a socially distant uh, social club. I mean, there's just one activity after another every single day, and that supports people who sometimes need just that little bit of extra support to give them the self-confidence uh, to be able to be all that they uh, can be. You know, I look at the two big purposes of the organization as I sort of see it, which is that awareness and understanding. And I look at all the supports that are provided in the form of all those different kinds of programs that uh, I mentioned that are, that are just a small slice of what's done. The biggest purpose, the best purpose, the thing that I think every organization should adopt is the, the motto or the slogan or the phrase that's on the website and everywhere else, which is see the person. Think for a minute with all the problems we have in, in Toronto, you know, and we're blessed here, but we have many problems with people, you know, not quite understanding each other and maybe not just taking a minute to sort of figure, put themselves in the other person's shoes for a minute and all that sort of thing. And if everybody just saw the person, it would make such a difference because inside every person, whatever their circumstances may be, whether they have a medical condition or whether it has something to do with their sexual orientation or the color of their skin or their face, or you could name a bunch of things, there's a person there a real person, a wonderful person. And I, I happen to know two people. I have, I have a, a best friend and an oldest friend and there's epilepsy in, in those families. And with those people, as much as they um, have to deal with some challenges that the rest of us don't, um, they are real people, wonderful people, people of courage and determination. Think of the courage and determination you have to have. And so I will just say, I am in awe of those people. I am in awe of those people and how they live their lives and how they make so much of their lives, notwithstanding that they have challenges put in front of them that other uh, people don't have. I'm in awe of Epilepsy Toronto. Uh, I'm in awe of the donors who gave all that money today. And so thank you. And I'm in awe of the staff, the staff and the team. I've seen the team of all the different kinds of people with different disciplines who help people and provide those wonderful supports and run those wonderful programs. I miss Buskerfest. Um, one of my favorite activities, I first started going to it when I was back on Young Street, and then I moved to Woodbine Park. Yeah. It's going to be back next year for sure. It's going to have as big a crowd as ever, um, and it's going to be great. And, and, but this is a wonderful thing, and lots of people took part. I will say there's a couple of people I know of who participated who should be asked to do an extra 50 kilometers to make sure they gave the money's worth to the donors. But I say to the people who are, are um, living so well with epilepsy, ep epilepsy I'm in awe. I'm talking to you out there, the big O as well, but I'm in awe of everything that you do and how you live your lives. And if I can provide any support I can as mayor or as a human being, uh, I will do that. So congratulations to one and all. Have some fun today. Uh, I'll be watching uh, the program with great interest. And uh, I just think what you're doing is fantastic. So thank you very much. Well, thank you so much, Mayor John Tawari, for taking the time to be here with us today. We know you have a busy schedule. And so thank you for showing your purple pride with us. I'm remembering the tutu for next year. And <laughs> we hope that you can come back next year. Um, and thank you so much for your support. So let's give a big round of applause for Mayor John Tawari, everyone. Thank you again. Thank you, bye. And now I would like to invite someone many of you will know, Epilepsy Toronto's Executive Director, Jeff, Jeff Bob, to help me out with this next section. I like that too. I'm gonna, I'm gonna keep that. I'm gonna use it for staff meetings. I like the applause. Uh, wow, those were lovely words from the mayor and spot on. I really like that he zeroed in on see the person because it's what I really miss more than anything. I think, Isabel, the last time I saw you was at the walk two years ago now when we walked in person yeah. and I, I put a, a foghorn in your hand and said, here, you lead the crowd. And yeah, it it's been like, a very long time, Jeff. Right? It's so true. And all these people here, I, I just miss seeing people here in the office. I, 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 uh, I miss meeting the new people who are so much of our community. I miss seeing the people. So I'm looking forward to this part. Yes, it's so great to see everybody's energy here today. And it's so great to see so many people joining us today. So um, Jeff, um, how would you like to hear a, from a few Epilepsy Toronto members right now? I really would, I really would, I'm ready. 
So a lot of members have been working really hard to support Epilepsy Toronto this past month. And we have a few lined up who would like to share their Purple Pride challenges with you. And is that something you might be up to? I'm, I'm so up for it. <laughs> okay, so first up, we have, uh, well, actually, I think you might know, she is one of uh, UT's newest board members. Let's hear it for Emily Hillstrom. And let's see what her challenge was. Hi, Emily. Hi, everyone. Welcome and happy Purple Walk Day. Um, I'm definitely not going to win for best costume, um, but I wore my ribbon and um, I'll tell you about my challenge if you want to hear about it. I do. Love to. So I used to accept most challenges that Mayor Tory would give me because um, I used to work for him in his office, but the extra 50 kilometers, I don't think I'm up for today because I already rode a hundred kilometers this morning. So I really took the, um, you know, one in a hundred challenge uh, to heart. I actually ended up riding 112 uh, because we had to make a few different pit stops along the road, but I had a really great group of riders who actually joined me and um, they helped me raise over $2,000. Wow. Wow. Congratulations. That's incredible. How far is 100 kilometers from where to where I am? Uh, downtown Toronto, all the way to Oakville and back. Oh my God. I, I don't think I could do that in a lifetime. That's amazing. Can you, can <laughs> you tell us briefly why you do what, what your connection is to us and why you do the run? Absolutely. Uh, so my brother, Owen, he was diagnosed with epilepsy when he was eight, and I think he's with us today, so I'll give him a little shout out. I forgot my sign too, you know, I told you I didn't really come prepared, but Owen's here with us, and um, we, uh, we, lived, we grew up in Northern Ontario in Sault Ste. Marie, and we just didn't have access to the resources that Epilepsy Toronto provides for um, people with epilepsy and their family and friends, and so I just saw this as such a great opportunity, you know, having worked in the mayor's office, seeing Busker Fest, um, getting, you know, to, to be at the, Christ, the, the Christmas market and the fair in the square. And, and um, really, I guess, after meeting with Jeff, hearing about all the, all the programs in the mayor Tory, he obviously named off quite a few, you know, of, of the things that Epilepsy Toronto is there for and uh, in our community and how they help support. Um, I just thought, you know, what better way uh, to help, you know, other families that might have the same challenges that our family and that my brother has, and, you know, still continues to have, but um, I know Owen's going to be joining some of the ET support groups, which we're really, really excited about. And um, I really hope that he, you know, benefits as much from ET as, as I do and, and um, sees all the work that we've been doing and that all the staff do on a daily basis. Well, it's, yeah. been, it's been a delight to have you on our board, I have to say, and, and part of our team. And welcome, Owen, wherever you are in this <laughs> massive square. Welcome to the Epilepsy Toronto family. We, we really look forward to meeting you. Thank you so much, Emily. It was great speaking with you. Thank you. So next up, we have one of our younger members named Sila, who would like to tell you and perhaps show you a little about her challenge. Hi, Sila. Hi. I, I saw you the other day on Live with Lily, didn't I? You're a star. <laughs> yeah, it's so great to see you. Tell us what you did for, for your one in a hundred challenge. So I'm going to do 100 cartwheels. 100 cartwheels hmm. do you have to go all the way from oakville to downtown no okay Sila, <laughs> i have to tell you that last year i tried to do some cartwheels as part of my challenge they were not pretty i couldn't do more than five but i posted them anyways on instagram for everybody to see i'm wondering could you show us your cartwheel sure yeah. Wow. Wow. Well done. Uh, perfect. Maybe we'll have you do cartwheels at Buskerfest next year. You can help raise some money for yourself. That would be brilliant. So, and tell us, tell us really quickly, why, why do you do the one in a hundred challenge? Why are you going to do all those cartwheels? Because I have epilepsy and I know a lot of kids have it too. So I just want to support everybody. Good for you. You're very courageous. We're thrilled to have you do cartwheels. I can hardly wait to see. You take lots of pictures. We want to see. 
Thanks so much, Sila, for being here with us today and for showing us your cartwheels. You're going to have to teach me how to do one someday. <laughs> Thank you so much again. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Okay. And finally, Jeff. Mm -hmm. Finally, we do have one more member who we'd really like to tell you about his Purple Pride Challenge. So let me introduce you to Alessandro and his mother, Rosa, and his incredible art. Hi, Alessandro. Hi, Isabel. Hi, Hi Jess. I thought it was Batman, but it's Alessandro. Hi, sweetie. How are you? Good. Good. You're gonna tell how old are you? Six. Six. Show us on your hand. Can you show us on one hand? That's a trick question. <laughs> ah, good for you. Six. He's six years old. And I'm gonna what? be seven in November. Okay. Nice. So you're like six and a half. And I got one hundred. Um. Okay, that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. 100 okay. Hey, and I got 100 followers. <laughs> wow, you have 100 followers? Yeah. Okay. And you and you have 100 paintings. Did you do the paintings yourself? Um, yes. Oh, you, can you show us a painting? Sure. Okay. You said mommy's going to show. There you go. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. It's beautiful. How did you do that? Can you tell us how you did it? Um, we draw a little piece. Okay. And, and, and we flip like this and we did like this. Actually, Jeff, I have to tell you something. Yeah, tell me. I have an original Alessandro. Oh no, you can't see mine. Oh, I have the original Alessandro wow, myself. Beautiful. Now yeah. I, understand, I understand, Rosa, that 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 Alessandro is actually selling these things. Where is he showing them? So he was uh, selling them on Instagram. He's still selling them till the end of June. And we ask for donations. So you pick a picture, painting, and then um, we send uh, the link and they donate. And we actually raised five thousand dollars from oh, pictures. So Thank you so much. And also, and you know what? Also, we some of the paintings went to our local bakery. It's called Tat Soup uh, Bread, and they sell them there as well. So most of the paintings are already sold. So, but there's still some left if anyone's interested. Don't so we can go get a painting and a bread at the same time. That's right. It must be so That's right. <laughs> they are beautiful, Alessandro. I think I think it's time we have maybe a little bit of a dance party. What do you think? We're gonna have a dance party later. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was thinking. Okay. You have some good news. <laughs> that was good. And for you, let me thank you. Oh, he's good. Amazing. Thank you, Alessandro. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. thank you. That was lovely. Thank you, Isabel. I really appreciated that. Thank you for sharing with me. Uh -huh. Thank you, buddy. Maybe later. We'll see you soon. Look, see? Yeah, Jeff, thank you so much for helping me out today with that. Anytime. Any next time we'll do it in person. Yes, we will yeah. do it in person. Right. It's great to see you. Thank you again. And, and you. everyone, big, big applause for Jeff. All righty. What an amazing way to kick off our virtual purple walk this year. Getting to hear about your purple pride challenges and how you are raising awareness and money for epilepsy is so incredible. The purple pride challenge really lets every person choose a challenge that suits them and is a way to show off the incredible skills, talents, passions that people have. The purple pride challenge is a way to remind our community to as, as Mayor Tori said, see the person. I've been 
following Epilepsy Toronto's social media, and I have seen some incredible Purple Pride challenges that you've been posting. And they, everyone's been sharing so many great challenges. I would love to share what some of you have been up to these past couple of weeks. Jacqueline, roll the tape. I'm doing a challenge to paint 100 tiny paintings. And I was running far away. One in 100 Canadians have epilepsy. Follow me to support the effort to raise awareness of epilepsy as well as funds for epilepsy foundations. I'm sipping wine in a robe. I look too good, look too good to be alone. My house clean. Be like, yeah. My life be like, yeah. My life be like, hey sunshine, good day. to laugh do 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 and when the sun is out i've got something i can laugh about i feel good do 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 and in a special way Oh, I loved that. My goodness. That was so heartwarming, everyone. Thank you so much. I was, my, my teeth are dry. Like I can't, there we go. I was smiling so much. Uh, those are great challenges, all supporting Epilepsy Toronto. And remember, we are still accepting donations up to two weeks after today. So be sure to donate. Well, I think it's time for our purple walk, our first purple walk competition category. I hope you've all written down your nominations for best costume in the chat because it's time to invite our guest judge for the best costume competition. From teaching awareness through puppetry, the star of Live with Lily. Drum roll, please. The one, the only, Lily Parks. <laughs> wow, wow, what a great introduction, Isabel. <laughs> Thanks so much. Great to see everybody out there. And by the way, Isabel, you are doing an incredible job today. Oh, thanks, Lily. That means a lot coming from a pro like you. Not only do you host a monthly show for kids about living with epilepsy, but last year you were sitting in my chair as one of the hosts of the virtual purple walk, right? Yeah. You are correct. The mundo there, Isabel. Yes, it was really tons of fun. But this year, I'm excited to be returning as a judge for this, especially because I love costumes. So I'm so honored to be a judge for the costume contest. <laughs> I just love dressing up. And you may not know this, Isabel, but purple just happens to be my favorite color. <laughs> Oh my goodness, what a coincidence. Well, all right, let's start with the first of our three contestants. 
let's welcome our first contestant, Alessandro. Whoa, really? Alessandro! Hello! Alessandro. Good to see you again! Mwah. Wow, I love your costume, Alessandro. That purple mask makes you look so, so, so like you have superpowers, don't you think, Isabel? I think so. I think he is a superhero. You're oh. a superhero in my books, Alessandro. Oh, oh, look at he's showing us the cape. Oh, oh. Alessandro. Oh, wait. Oh, wait a minute. Oh. There's something on the back of it, Isabel. There's what something on the back of it. And can we just see? I can't. Alessandro, can we Let's see what's on the back of Rosa? What's on the back of it, my love? Show the back. Oh, oh. it's a, a lightning bolt. Whoa, that really is a super power. <laughs> That's amazing. Thank you, Alessandro, for showing us. Thank you. Thank Shall, you. We Woo -hoo. Woo -hoo. Shall we see our I love movement? it. Yes. You are the best yes. superhero ever. Okay. Thank you. Oh, here's our second contestant, Kira Sheehan. Hi, Kira. Hi. Hi, Kira. Kira. I think that we we were able to see your challenge, which was what was it? A hundred out purple outfits. outfits? Yes, purple outfits. Yes. Oh, and what incredible outfits they were! Oh my Thank goodness. Thank you, Lily. You're welcome. I wish I had your fashion sense. <laughs> Are we able Thank you. to see what you're wearing right now? This, like, I see earrings and I I've, see. I've got my palm earrings. It's kind of hard for me to stand, but it's just a purple dress. <gasps> oh, look at it. Oh, the detail on that dress, Isabel. That's I need cool. one of those. <laughs> that Did is you make it yourself? No, I wish. Oh, well. <laughs> Maybe one day we can make it together. Yes. Because I'd like one. <laughs> Thank you so much, Kira. Okay, and then lastly, the Harrisons. Maybe Shauna Harrison and the Harrisons. Oh, look at the Harrisons. What? Hi, one, two, three, four. Look at their costumes. <laughs> My oh, goodness. The... Let me see. Come close. Come close. Oh, whoa. Look at the tutus. <laughs> Oh my goodness, that okay, looks okay. so good. Okay, I'm just gonna turn around not in that family. Okay, one, two, three, spin. The Harrison family spin. Look at them. Wow. <laughs> wow. You look terrific, you guys. Yes. Thank you. Yes. Oh, they are so great. Thank you so much. Okay, well, thank you to all our contestants for their incredible outfits. I need to, I need some, a, an upgrade myself, my goodness. Let's hear another a round of applause for these fashion icons. Woohoo! Woohoo! Yeah. All right, Lily, the yes. choice is yours to make. Who okay. wore it best? Will it be the Harrison? Will it be Kira? Or will it be Alessandro? Oh, oh, Isabel. Oh, this is like the toughest decision I've ever had. But, oh, I, okay, I've made up my mind. I'm going to give the title to, for the best costume today to the Harrison family! Okay. <laughs> but, oh, wait a minute, but wait a minute. I just want everyone to know where did Kira go? I wanted everyone to know that the Harrison family, Alessandro and Kira are all gonna get prizes! Yay! 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 Dance party! Amazing, <laughs> that, let's do that, Lily. Each of you are going to receive a gift card to Canadian Tire for $25. Amazing. Don't worry, everyone. We are far from done. Be sure to give us your nominations for best background and most spirited. Those will be coming up real soon. Thank yeah. you for your assistance and, of course, your vital decision. Oh, Thank yeah, no problem. Fun. That gift, that gift card is going to come in handy, Harrison family. <laughs> Love you all.
We love you, Lily. Now, I want to chat with someone who is using their creativity and her business to talk about epilepsy and have a little fun. Give it up for Kara. Hello, Kara. Hi. So also, uh, your background is amazing. Thank you so much. Trying to get in that purple pride spirit. Amazing. Well, we're so happy you're able to join us today. How are you enjoying the celebration so far? It has been so amazing. Everyone here is so inspiring. The energy is incredible and just so grateful to be with all of you. Oh, we're happy that you're here with us too. I've heard that you started an exciting new business recently and I can't wait to hear about it. Tell us a bit about this business you started during this pandemic and what inspired you to go on this adventure. Yeah. So I started a business during the pandemic called the playful warrior. So my mission is to connect people back to their inherent playful nature and uninhibited creativity. Um, although this sounds really fun, it actually started from a darker place. Um, I had, you know, ongoing struggles from epilepsy. I had a relationship and I lost my job. I was working through childhood trauma. I had a cockroach infestation. Um, the list goes on. It was a very very challenging time. Um, but at the same time, when I lost my corporate job, although it was shocking, I knew I had been deeply unhappy for a really long time. So I knew that that was my moment to actually figure out what I wanted to do. And, you know, I knew I wanted to help people, but I had no idea what that looked like. Um, and with everything feeling so heavy, I thought back to my inner child and how playful I was as a kid and how I felt so disconnected from that. You know, I had been taking life so seriously. So I decided to start playing and exploring my creativity again to see if I could find more joy in my life. And as I began going on my own play journey, my life started radically improving and I was healing. And so I got curious and I started studying the science behind play to understand why. And, you know, I was really surprised to learn about all the amazing benefits. So when I understood just how powerful it was, I became super passionate about play because what we learn in society is totally backwards. We learn that play is only for kids or that it's silly or immature or fluffy or purposeless. Um, but the truth is we all need play every single age, every single background. Play deprivation is actually a risk for our health. And play opens up what is possible for us. It expands our life. It brings us more joy and fun and creativity and adaptability. Also radically improves our health and well-being. Um, helps us build confidence and balance. It improves our relationships. And it's also a really important part of healing and moving towards more self-love and self-acceptance because the true spirit of play actually isn't competitive. So it's not about an outcome. So we get to learn to release judgment of ourselves and perfectionism. So my mission is really to create a safe space where people can be heard and seen for who they are authentically, where they can dive into play and self-expression safely and without judgment. So I like to say the playful warrior is about really healing the world with play so you can reconnect with your true self and live a life that excites you, a life that is more fun, full of ease and freedom. Cause I know I didn't have that life before. And I know what it's like to be disconnected from your authentic self. Um, so I do this with one-on-one -on -one coaching. I have a program called thought play. It's an eight week, powerful, fun healing journey that combines the power of play in subconscious mind. Because when I had this idea for my play business, I had a lot of mindset blocks. I had mm. self-sabotage. I had so much like self-doubt. I was like, what am I going to really do this? <laughs> leave the corporate world to start a play business. You know, I had a lot of self-doubt. So I got certified in neurolinguistic programming and hypnotherapy as well during the pandemic. Oh. Um, yeah, because 95% of what we do is driven by our subconscious mind. So it's so important to look at what we have in our subconscious. So I essentially use the power of play and the power of the subconscious mind. Um, and I also get to work with couples to reignite that sense of wonder in relationships. I work with families, frontline workers, and I also do team building for organizations and wellness breaks at events. So there's so many ways to play. Um, and I also wanted to share a free resource with everyone. Um, if you are having any fear of judgment or any self-doubt and you want to feel more confident, um, one of the techniques that really helped me was emotional freedom techniques. 
it's like acupuncture without the needles. So it's nice and safe and it will really help you release any negative emotions and balance your energy. Um, so I know they're going to put that in the chat. If you do feel like you just want to feel super confident, um, feel free to check that out. So I definitely wanted to give back with something to help everyone. Well, thank you so much that it really, that is beautiful. And, and we can all, all use more play and, and positivity and joy. And I mean, you are all of those things. I, I can feel your energy. And so thank you for sharing with all of us, uh, Kara. And thank you so much for being here to support Epilepsy Toronto and the epilepsy uh, community. Um, now, I think I, I speak for all of us when I say that I'd love for you to lead us in a little playful warrior activity to keep the party going. What do you think? Yes, I'm so excited okay. for this. I'm so pumped. Um, so yeah, I would love to lead everyone through a little groove, a little movement. It's not about like being the best dancer or choreography. It's just about having fun. We are just going to groove and have a good time all together. Um, so you'll just follow my movement. It'll be a bit silly. Um, we're all in this together and just know that this is a safe space. Amazing. So essentially you're acting like my mirror. So if I were to put one hand up, you would do the same. If I were to put up another hand, you would do the same. So we're all just going to move and groove. Um, I might actually just quickly take off my background though, because sometimes I lose some hands in this background, um, but I will bring it back later. So whenever you are ready.
Thank you so much, Kara, for leading that and for sharing your story with us. I don't know about anybody else, but I am feeling pretty energized and ready to create. So thank you again, Kara. <laughs> so this is my fifth purple walk. And every year I don't walk alone. My partner, my family, my friends, and my community come together. And we all walk as a team in In It With Isa. Sending love to all my team tuning in from all over the world right now. I know you're out there. Love you all. Uh, there are so many reasons to walk in the Purple Walk, and we share our reasons to walk with our love, our voice, and of course, our signs. There's my sign. Uh, that's right, everyone. It's time to get out your signs. If you don't have an I am walking for sign in front of you, go grab a piece of paper, grab some pens, pencils, markers, whatever you can find and share why you are walking. If you have your signs, hold them up in front of your screen. If you have a virtual background, you may want to turn it off for this part. And don't worry if the words look backwards on your screen to you, they are on the right way for us, for, for the rest of us to see. Let's see you all hold up your signs, walkers, in front of your screens so we can all see. Amazing, it's looking so good. Wow, thank you everyone so much for sharing your uh, signs, who you are walking for and having so much fun. 
I have to just shout out to a really good friend of mine in BC who had a sign up and that caught me by surprise, but that's just what this is about. Everyone coming together to celebrate everybody. It feels so great to be able to smile with you all again. Now we are lucky to know so many talented and brilliant people that are also living with epilepsy. Epilepsy Toronto has the privilege to be able to acknowledge some of the brilliant minds at work in our community through two scholarships that help students achieve their academic dreams. The Ade Ad, Ad the Ade Adibide Scholarship is dedicated to the memory of Ade, an inspirational young woman and an academic who was dedicated to educating others about the challenges faced by people living with epilepsy. We honor Ade's memory through this scholarship awarded to students living with epilepsy who have overcome barriers and have shown extraordinary resilience in their own personal challenges with epilepsy. Every year, two incredible students are recognized and here to announce our recipients today is Jolly Abraka Abrakasa. Please give a warm welcome to Jolly. Hi, Jolly. Hi, everybody. Thank you so very much, Isabel. Um, I want to thank Epilepsy Toronto for all of the work that they do. Uh, and uh, all the effort that was put into the, um, organizing this um, virtual work. I know it's not easy since um, I've been trying to teach online. I know how challenging that can be. Um, I especially want to thank you for remembering Adi and keeping her memory alive. I am proud to present this year's Adi Adegbite Scholarship to two exceptional applicants. Um, those who were on the selection team would attest to the fact that this year was particularly difficult choosing because everybody was so very well qualified. Um, the first recipient, Hannah Gray, is currently completing a double major in biology and psychology. She's also interested in the intersection of virtual reality and epilepsy research, an area that of study that was of particular interest to um, Adi. Sorry. Uh, um, she was of, uh, Adi really, really enjoyed technology when it came into place. And she was of the opinion that um, technology should be used to help people with seizure disorders, um, especially when she was told to avoid flashing lights. Uh, at that point, she felt, you know, I mean, the computers are all flashing lights. They should be able to use it to help us. Our second recipient, Don, is measuring in social work, another area that Adi was very, very interested in. She was of the opinion that we need social workers who were knowledgeable about epilepsy and empathetic with people living with epilepsy. So she would have been very thrilled that these two, uh, uh, these two recipients are getting her award. So congratulations to both is, yeah. Hannah and Don. I wish you the absolute best in both of your chosen endeavors. And I hope that you can continue to learn and grow as much as you can. Thank, Thank you. you very much. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you so much, Jolly, for being here today and for presenting this award in honor of Ade. And congratulations once again to those two recipients. Our second scholarship is in honor of Michelle Edwards, an, uh, another brilliant woman who developed accounting techniques sought out after by some of the biggest corporations in her field. After facing discrimination on the basis of her epilepsy in both the workplace and the classroom, Michelle successfully brought the, her college to uh, human, re, 
Human Rights Commission and drove the school to make new policies and accommodations for people living with disabilities. Her legacy continues to shine through her family and through the work of the Michelle Edwards Bursary, supporting women with epilepsy who have faced adversity, adversity or discrimination and who continue to be ambitious and determined in pursuing their education or career goals. Here to present the recipients of the Michelle Edwards Bursary, please give a warm welcome to Michelle's husband, Peter. Hi, Peter. Hi, how are you? Thank you, Isabel, and thank you, Epilepsy Toronto. Today, I'm honored to present the Michelle Edwards Bursary to an extraordinary person. Ashley Hunt is a single mother and a student in the Assaulted Women and Children's Counselor Advocate Program at George Brown College. With aspirations to complete her master's in social work and serve her community by working for the Manitoba Metis Federation to help others. For your determination, ambition, and courage, I would like to say chi miigwech, and congratulations, Ashley. May you find success and fulfillment in your education and career goals. Thank you, Peter, and thank you, Ashley. That was amazing. I want to give some incredible well wishes to all our scholarship recipients. I know you will do incredible things, all of you. Thank you so much to Jolly and Peter as well for coming to present the award today. It is great to see the both of you today. Well, Purple Walkers, it's that time again for a Purple Walk competition category. Quick as you can, if you have it yet, write down the nominations for best background in the chat. That's right, it's the best background. And to join me is our next guest judge. I would like to invite the outstanding director of development and my very good friend, Brandon. Everyone cheer for Brandon. <laughs> See, I was giving you a round of applause. <laughs> I appreciate it. Hello, Brandon. Now you oh. have been to every single purple walk ever. Is that correct? Uh, it is true. And even when we did them before, they were the purple walk. Wow. So I'm sure you've got this purple walk down to a science, but you know, every year there is something that makes it so different and so unique to the other years. So what would you say has made this year's walk special for you? You know, the Purple Walk is always a great time for us to see each other and come together. Often we don't see each other because we access different parts of the services. And so we all come together. And this year particularly was difficult because we haven't seen each other in the offices or at different events. And so there's so many new families and to see all of these beautiful people coming together who have never physically met each other and still support each other, it's exactly why we started the Purple Walk. It's because we're here for each other, even if it's socially distanced or, you know, hugging each other at the next Purple Walk, which we will be doing in person. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for sharing, Brandon. Hey, as the guest judge for Best Background, can you tell me a little bit about what you believe makes a good background for this category? Well, I think it needs to be purple and be personable, right? Yeah. Yeah. I think that sounds good. Yeah. Thank you for those insights. Uh, shall we uh, introduce our three contestants? Ooh, I'm excited. All right, Brandon. So our first contestant is Stephanie. <gasps> oh, wow. Okay. Wow. Oh, that's amazing. Oh, look at that. Empowered, persistent, inspired, lively, enduring, positive, social. Yay. Oh, I love it so much. <laughs> that is amazing. Did you do that all, all by yourself, Stephanie? Did you draw that? Oh, I can't hear you. <laughs> Wow, it's so beautiful. It honestly, yeah, it's so, you know, so beautiful. 
We used to do uh, poster competitions. I think maybe we should start that. You definitely would be a winner. That's a fantastic poster, guys. So yeah, it was Joanna who did most of it. Oh, she kind of oh, Joanna, Joanna. Yeah. Well, it's but Joanna. It was kind of a family it's, effort. It was good. Even our our four four year old son did a little. His was like the the bit behind me, the star. That was his. Yes. Amazing. Oh, wow. Anyway. Amazing. Yeah. In the heart, yeah. And so Thanks. I know this is your first purple walk, right, guys? No, we were at last year's virtual one. Oh, amazing. Well, we're so happy to have you. It looks great. Who... Thank you. Amazing. Thank you. So our next contestant is Kelly Ann. Kelly Ann and two. Hi, Kelly Ann. Wow, look at that. Show Hi, us your purple pride. Yes. Oh, Kellyanne, and your hat. How did we miss your hat for the costume? Um, what do you Good mean? Good job. Your hat's so sparkly. I love it. <laughs> Good job. I love that background. This is a hard competition. Do we have one I more? Know. Yeah, we have one more. Let's go to our <gasps> next one. This is Jillian. Hi, Jillian. Oh, I love it. This, I love this background. That's a great background. That's from a few years ago. That looks so great when we were at uh, Nathan Phillips Square. That's great. Wow, this is a hard competition. I don't know. Jillian, what, what inspired this background? I love it. Well, I achieved my goal, first of all, which I'm happy about. Amazing. And, uh, to do this, I, I like to design and draw, so. I like to also put it on my phone all the time for remembrance as how I was always helping you guys. It's been now, I'm pretty sure it's more than 15 years. Wow, that's amazing. Thank you oh, so much. You. I don't thank know how you, we're going to pick a background. Thank you to all our contestants for their yes. amazing backgrounds. Let's hear another round of applause for these amazing background bosses. All right, Brandon, the choice is this yours. This is really Wait. hard. Who had the best background? Is it Stephanie and Joanna and the family? Is it Kelly Ann or is it Jillian? This is really hard. They're all so great, but you they know, are. how you spelled out epilepsy with all those inspiring words, I have to go with Joanna and the Long family. Yay. Hey, well, congratulations, Joanna I, and the Long family. Yay. You have just gotten bragging rights for a year as the best background, and you'll be taking home $25 from Canadian Tire. But don't worry, other contestants, you are also receiving a $25 gift card to Canadian Tire, too. Thank you all, and thank you, Brandon, for coming on to judge with me. You are amazing. We have one more category coming up, and it is the Best Purple Spirit Award. So stay tuned for that, everyone. Next, I am so excited to introduce my next guest, who is a dear friend, the wonderful Cheryl. Happy virtual purple walk. It is so nice to see you. Yeah, you too. You have been part of purple walk since it began. And what makes you keep coming back every year? How can I not come back and support my crew? Yes. This is my thing. This is my jam. This I'm here to support everyone who needs supporting, including myself. <laughs> Totally. You're, you are always so good at that. You are so great to others. And also she, she's amazing, everyone. Uh, so last year, um, Rosie uh, has been leading a, a group called Rosie's Renegades. And that's the biggest group in a virtual Purple Walk this year. So you all motivate each other, work together to raise a lot of awareness and a lot of money for Epilepsy Toronto. So yes. how has your team been able to be so successful and what is your motivation? Uh, we actually have a group chat. We actually motivate each other on the group chat. Um, if someone needs a little kick in the butt to let you know, 
get your you know money coming in i'll give them that but they need to um <laughs> who else there was also somebody that needed help setting up their profile you know what it took too long so i did it for them amazing <laughs> so That's good getting everyone to start you know Donations in, bringing it in for Epilepsy Toronto, who's supported us all in some way, shape, or form. And we've all been there for each other and come to their, you know, gone gone to them for help. So well, and you're you are so certainly no stranger to advocacy for others and for Epilepsy Toronto. And you have been such a strong advocate for every one who's living with epilepsy, not just for the Purple Walk, but throughout the year. So why do you think that events like the virtual Purple Walk are important for raising visibility of epilepsy in our communities? Um, because I still think there is a lack of uh, knowledge in the community, in the world, possibly. I mean, I was wearing here, I'll show you, purple shoes, purple socks, purple shorts, purple t-shirt and my purple mask I got in the mail oh yeah I still had people today asking me when I went to the grocery store and stuff so can I ask why you're wearing all purple and I'm thinking look at the back of my shirt it says epilepsy Toronto like one in a hundred like I would have assumed like you know people would have known but no if I still have to tell them to this day in 2021 what purple is and epilepsy is then I still need to educate others. So I will definitely always be an ad advocate for epilepsy. Absolutely. Absolutely. I agree with you. I think it's exactly the same. It's so important that we have these events that will raise visibility for epilepsy, but also for Epilepsy Toronto that has supported us so much um, this year, every year. And uh, yeah, it's so nice to see you. I'm thrilled at all the purple you're wearing uh, yeah <laughs> the shoes. and including your shoes I love that you're wearing purple shoes too amazing um Cheryl it's always a pleasure to see you and I hope that in the not so far future we are not so not so far future uh we'll see each other again we'll sometimes see each other so everyone thank let's all give it up for Cheryl and thank you so much for joining us today Love and miss you all. Miss you too. Miss you too. Uh, yeah, there are some remarkable folks in Toronto who are bettering the lives of people living with epilepsy in many impactful ways. Uh, here to announce the recipient of this year's Helping Out People with Epilepsy Award, otherwise known as the HOPE Award, please give a big warm welcome to Adult Services Director and someone I care about very much, Rosie. <laughs> Thank you, Isabel. This is so much fun. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> anyway, I'll move right along. It is my pleasure to talk a little bit about the HOPE Award and to honor our incredible recipient this year. The HOPE Award, as many of you may know, was an award that was created to honor those who have gone above and beyond in their support of people living with epilepsy. I mean, our past recipients have been, you know, scientists who have made significant breakthroughs and discoveries related to epilepsy. Some have worked in advocacy and made a huge impact on their community, or others have just greatly improved the quality of life of those living with epilepsy in some way or other. Today's honoree, you will, not, you will see, is certainly no different in their strides to bettering the lives of people in our epilepsy community. During a year where few things were for certain, all of us face extreme challenges. And this individual, we think, is a, was a very, very bright light who created a safe space of what I would say solace and fostered a sense of community for many members of Epilepsy Toronto. And so it is with great honor that I would like to call on this year's HOPE Award recipient. This individual volunteered his time, his expertise, 
his resources to bring mindfulness program into epilepsy Toronto. And then he seamlessly transitioned in providing these services virtually at a time when it was most needed. He has certainly made a real difference in the lives of people living with epilepsy. So please join me in welcoming this year's Hope Award inductee, ta-da, Michael. Alex. <laughs> wow. Um, I'm, I, and this doesn't, uh, the people in the epilepsy uh, are yoga peeps. They know uh, catching me up short of something to say is, is rare, but I'm speechless. Um, thank you so much. I'm, uh, I can't say enough about the epilepsy Toronto community The the, um, uh, yeah, speechless. Um, they are the, the whole community has made me feel so welcome and they are the kindest, best, most awesome people I know. Always inspiring me and like showing me how to bring it, how to be resilient and how to be wise and kind. And I just try to live up to that standard. And uh, I, you know what? And also Rosie, <laughs> seamless. <laughs> that, I, that's very kind way to describe what, what uh, I... I brought in terms of bringing it online, but I would encourage everyone to come out and join us. It's, you know, it really isn't about the yoga or the mindfulness. I, I, you know, by my tongue to say that, but it's truly, it's about the people and the connections that we make and spending time together. And we laugh and we breathe together and we have some fun. There's play. Um, so I, if I lived a thousand years, I couldn't give back enough to this community. So thank, I'm so touched. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Michael. We really, really appreciate you. So, sorry for making you speechless. <laughs> and Krista, <laughs> okay. <laughs> and Krista, you're hiding, but thank you for keeping you our there. secret <laughs> and uh, for presenting the award to Michael. And so uh, thank you so much. And now I just turn it right back over to our amazing host and one of my favorite people too, Isabel. Hello back again. Congratulations, Michael. Uh, we are now going to visit with Andrew, Stephanie, and the fam. Hi, Andrew, Stephanie, and the fam. Hello. Joanna. Hi. How are you doing so far? I mean, this is, you are our background winner. <laughs> Yes, thank you. We're yeah. very proud. It's an honor. Yeah. It's not, yeah, exactly. It's <laughs> yeah. It's been a good event for us so far. Totally. Yeah, it's really nice Great. to see everybody. So, um, Andrew, if I read your team fundraising page right, it has been almost a year since you first reached out to Epilepsy Toronto. Is that right? Yeah, that's right. And and actually not much longer than that, that I've known that I have had epilepsy. So I, I had uh, focal seizures for like as early, I, the earliest one might have been when I was 17 years old. Uh, I got to be 39 before I knew what was going on. And uh, I had talked to doctors about it, but I guess they're hard to describe and the doctors were not neurologists. Uh, but eventually I got to talk to a neurologist about something else and, and they thought like, oh, well, maybe this is epilepsy. Uh, and then I had a tonic clonic seizure um, in june of 2019 mm -hmm. and so the doctor said oh yeah okay so now we know uh 2020 june or, 2020. sorry 2020 okay there you go i am one of the people that have uh you know like memory issues <laughs> associated with epilepsy too anyway yep, so <laughs> yeah <laughs> so uh so then you know it's like i i could have connected i think with epilepsy trial earlier if i had known that what i had was epilepsy but now that i know and i have connected Honestly, in the short time that I've been uh, connected, it's been tremendously helpful. We really love the trivia nights, but there's so much more. You know, so glad to see Rosie uh, mentioned here. Because yeah, we, we love the family events. Like the yeah. March break camp was really great for our kids. And we just really appreciate that sense of community. And, you know, when I was, when Andrew first had his tonic clonic seizure, like I felt really alone. I was dealing with nocturnal focal seizures that he was having and not really understanding those and pretty upset about it. And just, yeah, getting to talk to Rosie about that. Um, really really helped me to understand what was going on and to like move forward with that and uh yeah i'm just i'm really grateful that we found out about epilepsy toronto for sure 
also um, Carter helped me a lot with the employment services. Like, and it's just, I don't know, like, what do you guys not do? It's, it's fantastic. <laughs> it, it's, it's very true. Um, I, I, I feel very similar to you. I, um, you know, Epilepsy Toronto is an agency that truly can help you with, with so many aspects of your life. Um, and, and similarly, you know, uh, all, everyone there is really supportive, but also Rosie has been very supportive to my family as well. So I can definitely relate to you on that. Um, and, and it's amazing that you are so involved. So you, you go to the trivia nights yep. and you, you, uh, you've seen Ro Rosie. Uh, anything else coming up, going on? The, the March break. A yeah, yeah, sorry, go March. ahead. Oh, April break. Yeah, April break camp. Yeah. What did you do there, Joanna? Um, we we did the picture thingy where you draw pictures and other people guess what it is. Yeah. Yeah, you did lots of fun games, right? You did a lot of yeah. new new. And we did games. a bingo thing. Yeah. Oh, that's amazing. And crafts. Yeah, it was really cool. And and, well, and uh, you know, as a person with a young family. I really appreciate how much Epilepsy Toronto has done to help my children understand epilepsy. Yeah, and not be scared of it. Yeah, yeah. To, exactly. You know, feel, to, to feel better about it and, and know what I need and how mm -hmm. we can help each other. Yeah, the wonderful. more the more you know and the more, yeah, the more comfortable yeah. you are. So, well, thank you so much for joining me, Andrew and Stephanie and Joanna. And I hope you have an, an amazing rest of your purple walk uh, and hope to see you again soon so thank you so for much for sure please. thank you thank uh, you wow that was that was awesome that uh, thank you uh to all of the epilepsy toronto staff for all the incredible work you do year round for the community and for getting out there and doing some incredible things for your purple pride challenges walkers the time has come again it is time for your sorry, our final Purple Walk competition category. This is your last chance to take to the chat to write down your nominations for the most energy. Please welcome me in introducing our final judge of the walk. It is the illustrious Stephanie from Adult Services. Give it up for Stephanie. Hi, everybody. Hi. I'm so happy to be here. Hi. And it's so uh, nice to see you, Isabel. I know, it's so nice to see you. <laughs> <laughs> um, so you have, have you been enjoying the celebrations this year? My gosh, yeah. It's, you know what I love about these events is that I get to see people kind of outside, I mean, outside of the office, the Zoom office, um, yeah. you know, just living their lives, being with their family. Um, and so I get to kind of see our members in a different way. And, and I love that and just feel really connected to our community. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm so, honestly, I'm so glad to have you here. Uh, we go back, so it's so nice. Yeah. <laughs> um, now, your challenge was to run over 100 kilometers over the span of so, five. Not over 100 kilometers, 100 kilometers. <laughs> We're gonna go back again. Just um, wanna be really clear that I... <laughs> so we, are, we are doing 100 kilometers 100 kilometers <laughs> good excellent yeah. <laughs> over 100 kilometers i was going to be like oh my gosh so cool i mean but 100 kilometers is also nice. <laughs> so cool um over the span of five weeks though right so yes. that's a, that's a huge challenge um, yeah and and i hadn't run in a long time like i kind of used to run but i i lot, lot, went onto my map my run app and i hadn't run since 2018 so so it had been a while and I'm a yeah. bit older. And so it was, that 5K was a lot harder than it. Uh, I knew it was going to be hard, but it was harder than I even thought it was going to be. So, so yeah. Well, good on you for, for going for it. And you'll have to tell me about what running app you use because I could do some running. I'm yeah, yeah, sure. It was, it was honestly, it was great. And it was great to get out in the community and just run around. And I was actually, um, inspired by one of our members last year who told me that he was running a hundred kilometers. Um, and I was like, that's such a great idea. So that's, that's how I challenged, I, I, you know, and that's just, 
I'm so inspired by our members every day. Um, this is just one way in which I was inspired by one of them. And so thank you to him for doing that and inspiring me. Well, that's really lovely. And thank you for sharing, Stephanie. Yes, you. we are all together inspired, but also we, you are inspiring as well. Aww, so, thank you. Um, uh, as a guest judge for most mm. bearded, um, what are you going to be looking for today? You know what? I kind of, I Googled spirit because I'm like, how do you articulate spirit? Um, it's kind of has a je ne sais quoi, doesn't it? Quality. Yes. Um, so I think I'm going to be looking for uh, energy and mm -hmm. vitality, um, lots of smiles and probably purple too. I think that's, a, I think that sounds good to me. Yeah. So <laughs> I think this is going to be really fun. Um, let's meet our three spirited contestants. Please welcome to the virtual stage, our first contestants, David and Heather. What? what? <laughs> I seriously, I, <laughs> I didn't think I, I, I was going to be nominated. <laughs> were you doing some dancing before? Oh, I was doing lots of dances. <laughs> yeah. So uh, lots of dancing and I'm seeing lots of purple too. You see this? Oh, it's a beautiful necklace and it says I'm living well with epilepsy. Nice. Beautiful necklace and a beautiful button. And a purple yeah. shirt it looks like oh, and a good definitely. message too. Yep. Living well with epilepsy. I love that. Love Amazing. it. Amazing. Well, thank you, David. Um, let's meet our next contestant. It's Cheryl Mendez. Hi, Cheryl. Hi. <laughs> well, you know what? I know Cheryl a little bit just from being around the office and I know how much spirit she does bring. And um, even just hearing her speak about how she uh, helps motivate her, her uh, group members to, um, to get, you know, get into the purple walk and get fundraising and get their pages started. Like that is very spiritful. So for so, yeah, sure. That's, and I noticed your sign was very creative. <laughs> yes. <laughs> that's pretty awesome. And the head to toe purple too at the grocery store. Oh my gosh, I got questioned. Oh my gosh, I was surprised no one knew what it was. It literally says, I turned around. I'm like, it says epilepsy, guys. Do you not know what epilepsy is? Yeah. We got to represent epilepsy awareness every yeah. day. <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, let's see our final contestant, Barb. Hi, Barb. Oh, hi. I'm shocked. I'm absolutely shocked. Thank Barb, you so much. What What do you think brought you to being? I, Barb, we and we have also met. We met at uh, the Christmas party. I think the last yeah. Christmas party pre-COVID. Yeah. Um, and I remember talking to you and your friends and. Um, mm -hmm. uh, and uh, I see the purple shirt for sure. See the purple shirt. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm shocked. I'm a nominee. Um, it's, it's all about Rochelle. My, my wife is just coming from the other room. She, I think she's jealous. I, I heard you she's talk. Like, Yeah, she said, she just heard me talk. Um, we always tell people we cannot say enough about Epilepsy Toronto and the community. Um, I simply do not know how we would have gotten through Rochelle's diagnosis in 2010 without Epilepsy Toronto. There are so many wonderful people on this call that we have had such wonderful interactions with. I'm almost te tearing up weeping here, going, uh, watching you all like, like Rosie and, and um, uh, oh God, Brandon. I can't, Brandon and Jared and, and and everyone, Mackenzie, and just like, there are so many amazing people. And so every year we fundraise for Epilepsy Toronto and people say, well, why do you do it? And we do it because I want this organization to be around forever for all the people. Oh, Barb. That mean, and so that, you know, to our community and that's what it's about. It's a community. And I just, I just love you guys so much. So you, you've made all the difference in our lives. So and Barb, this is supposed to be about you, but I think that 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 um, what you just articulated really shows how much how committed you are to that Plexi community and um, that really shows your spirit. So thank you for sharing that. 
Yeah, you're the only charity I beg my friends to donate to. <laughs> and they donated over $1,600 this year. Yes. We were so Congratulations. excited. That's what's like an all time high for us. So we were really happy. Oh, wow. Stephanie, I, I don't, I, I, I don't know what it's like to be in your position right now because it all comes down to you and who you think is the most spirited. Is it Cheryl? Is it David? Or is it Barb? I don't, I don't even know. You know, I you think, know what? I'm still not totally sure. Do you think we could do like a spirit off? Oh, <laughs> I think we can arrange that. So uh, Mac, Mac, if you can drop me a beat, <laughs> let's have each contestant give us as much spirit as they can for like 15 seconds. And by then I'll be sure, I'll for sure be able to make a decision. <laughs> It's coming down on me. I'm ready, rain on me. Drop on at least I'm alive. Rain on me, rain, rain, rain on me. Rain, rain, rain on me. Drop on at least I'm alive. Okay, oh, God, so Stephanie. <laughs> That was okay. amazing. That was, that was, that was so amazing. Um, and it's, it's very hard to choose. So let me just say that. And I love you all. Um, everyone, all of you are going to go home with a gift card uh, to Canadian Tire, just so you know. But I think the winner, the person with the most spirit is Cheryl. <laughs> hey. so we are all winners though. We are yeah. all winners. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I agree with that. Yeah. <laughs> Congratulations, Cheryl, and to all of our other contestants as well. That dance party, I wish it could have continued. Uh, but yes, you have each won a $25 gift card to Canadian Tire, and well done. And Stephanie, thank you so much for joining us. I'm so happy to be here. And there you have it, Purple Walkers. Thank you to all of you who have participated this year through our Purple Walk Challenge. Your fundraising efforts, and of course, by being with us here today, your efforts mean the world to Epilepsy Toronto. It means they can offer services without financial barriers. It means they can continue to work in our community to remove harmful stigma and create more awareness. To everyone watching on Facebook out there, it's still not too late to donate to the Virtual Purple Walk and to support your walker of your team, or sorry, your team of choice. The online fundraising portal will be closing two weeks from today on Saturday, July 3rd. So walkers and donors, please help us reach our $150,000 goal. We are already two thirds of the way there. Thank you everyone again. It has been an absolute honor to be your host today. I thank you all from the bottom of my heart for everything you've done for me as well. And I can't wait to see you all again next year. So let's end this party with a classic dance party. Play that track, Jack.
Thank you. Thank you everyone for coming to this year's virtual Purple Walk. It was amazing to see you all. Of course, we have to give a huge, huge thank you to Isabel, our host, uh, for if she didn't do this, none of this would have been possible. So thank you so much, Isabel, for everything that you have done. Uh, and thank you to all of you for coming, for showing your Purple Pride, uh, and every year making this event just so, so, so special. 